In the previous section, we talked about arithmetic of functions. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. In this section, we will look at arithmetic of power functions, mainly add, subtract, and multiply. And in the next section, we'll look at division of power functions. So let's recall even power functions when it's x squared, x to the 4, in general, x to the 2n, where n is a whole number. We have this u shape here. x squared is the parabola going through 0, 0. x to the 4 is a similar shape, except between 0 and 1, the points raised to fourth power are lower than x squared. But bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1, x to the fourth is going to be a number higher than x squared, similarly with x to the 6. So you see these graphs here, domain negative infinity to infinity, range is 0 to infinity, x and y intercepts are 0, 0. It's not one-to-one -one function. End behavior, both ends are facing up. In other words, when x goes to infinity, function goes to infinity. When x goes to negative infinity, function goes to infinity. So those are our even power functions. We saw transformation of functions is what happens when you do arithmetic with constants. So for example, if you wanted to look at transformation of even power functions, it will look like some coefficient in front times x minus h to the even power plus a number k. The a will control vertical stretch or vertical compression. The h will control left-right movement. And the k will control up-down movement. In other words, the h will determine horizontal shifts, and the k will determine vertical shifts. So for example, if we have x squared plus 3, it will be the parabola x squared plus 3 will take it up 3. If you look at x minus 2 to the fourth power, it will be the same graph as x to the 4, but shifted 2 to the right. If you look at x plus 1 to the sixth power minus 4, the plus 1, x plus 1 shifts it left 1. The x to the sixth graph is shifted left 1 and down 4. If you have number in front, say, negative 3 times x minus 2 to the fourth plus 4, the 2, x minus 2 shifts it to the right 2, the negative 3 reflects it across the x-axis and has a stretch, a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, and the plus 4 will take it up 4. So transformation of even functions will retain the basic shape, and then all you have to do is horizontal shifts, vertical shifts, or horizontal or vertical stretch and compressions. Similarly, if you have odd power functions, so that would be x to power third or fifth or seventh, you will end up with negative infinity to infinity domain. Range is negative infinity to infinity. x and y intercepts are 0, 0 again. This time, the function is 1 to 1. And as x goes to infinity, function goes to infinity. x goes to negative infinity, function goes to negative infinity. So right end is facing up, and left end is facing down. And so that means if we do transformation of odd functions, it will look like a times x minus h to power 2n plus 1 plus k. The a will control vertical stretch or compression. The h will control horizontal shifts. And the k will control vertical shifts. So for example, if you have x to the third plus 3, so the x cubed graph shifted up 3. x minus 2 to the fifth power is x to the fifth graph shifted 2 to the right. If you had x plus 1 to the seventh power minus 2, it's the same graph as x to the seventh, but shifted 1 to the left and 2 down. y equals negative 3 x minus 2 to the fifth plus 4. 
x minus 2 to the fifth power has a graph similar to x to the fifth, shifted 2 to the right. Negative 3 will make it reflect across the x-axis and stretched vertically. And the plus 4 will take it up 4. So that's this graph right here. So now that we know that, we know we can do arithmetic of power functions and still get graphs that will be some versions of these combined together. So a polynomial function in one variable of degree n can be written as constant term plus some coefficient times x term plus coefficient times x squared term, and so on, all the way to the nth power. The coefficient of the nth power is called the leading coefficient, and n is called the degree of the polynomial. The domain for all of these functions, since we can plug in any x value, is going to be all real numbers. So again, these powers, 1, uh, 0 power means constant term, so that would be horizontal lines. If you add an x term, that will be linear functions or lines. Add square term, make it quadratic. Cube will make it a third degree polynomial, and so on. So of course, let's concentrate on linear functions. Then we'll go to quadratic functions and then see how higher order polynomials look like. So let's just take a look at linear functions. So here's the line y equals x. You already know that if you have y equals mx, the m controls the slope. For example, when m is 1, you're going, the run is 1 and the rise is 1. So 1 over, 1 up. 1 over, 1 up. 1 over, 1 up. Slope is rise over run. And it basically means that it's the rate of change. Let's say m is 2, then you will have Run is 1 and rise is 2. Run is 1 and rise is 2. If you go left 1, you'll go down 2. If you make m to be negative, so for example, when m is negative 2, you will go 1 over and 2 down instead of up. 1 over, 2 down. If you go left 1, you'll have to go up 2. So slope negative means that the rate is negative or you're going down, or the function is decreasing. Again, constant rate. So if your slope is 2 thirds, you will go 3 over and 2 up, 3 over and 2 up, and so on. Or left, 3 and down, 2. So that's what slope of 2 thirds means. If you make the slope a negative 2 thirds, same thing, but you will go 3 over and 2 down instead of 2 up. All right, let's make the m2 and see what happens when you move the b. B negative takes it down, positive takes it up. So, so this means it's vertical shift up or vertical shift down. All right, let's take a look at a line that is y equals a times x minus h plus k. So if you do that, and let's say a is 2. So if a is 2 and now you're looking at h and k, let's take a look. So h makes it go to the right. So right 3, you can see the k will move it up and down. k is 2, then 3, 2 is a point on the line. And so the graph is going through the line. So you can see if the slope is 1, 1 times x minus 3 plus 2 means the coordinate 3, 2 is on the line, or y minus 2 equals slope times x minus 3. So 3, 2 is a point on the graph. If the slope is changed, the m positive slope will be increasing lines, and negative slope is decreasing lines. But either way, if the h is 3, k is 2, the it's parallel to the line that goes through 0, 0, but it passes through the point 3, 2. So linear functions, linear polynomials, are going to be constant term plus some coefficient times x. It's linear because the degree is 1. Another way to write that would be y equals mx plus b, or y equals some constant times 
x minus h plus k, where h k is a point on the line and the a is the slope. So when our a sub 1 or the m or the a, depending on which form you have written the line in, are all real numbers and they represent the slope of the line, rise over run. So the constant term a sub 0 or b, or if it's written in this form, it would have to be k minus the a h, all represent the y-intercept, or places where the line cuts through the y-axis. The hk will be the point on the line. If you reverse the x and the y, so that means it says x equals a times y minus k plus h, then instead of rise over run, you will have run over rise, but still hk will be point on the line. So all lines you can think of as transformations of the power function y equals x. Some properties of linear functions that you may recall, the lines are parallel to each other if and only if they have the same slope. They are perpendicular to each other if and only if their slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. Slope of a horizontal line is zero. Slope of a vertical line is undefined. All right, let's take a look at quadratic functions. So a quadratic function would be a function that has constant term, x term, and x squared term. So the coefficient of x squared is non-zero. So the degree of this polynomial is 2, and we call it a quadratic function. What do you think the graph of this function would be like? Yes it will be transformations of the power function x squared. We already know that y equals x squared graph is this parabola that you see here with vertex 0, 0. So 0, 0 is like the minimum point on the parabola. Now, if you control the h and the k, so if you move the h, you know you're going to have horizontal shifts. In, if you go k, move k, you will have vertical shifts. If you control the a, so let's bring back our h and k to 0. If you control the a, that will control vertical stretch. If you go negative, it will first of all reflect. If you set a to negative 1, it will be a reflection of the original parabola. So this is the original parabola. Negative 1 as a coefficient gives you the reflection across the x-axis. And now, let's move our h and k. So in addition, then it can move left or right, and then up and down. So if our parabola equation is written as a times x minus h to power n plus k, and then you control the a and the h and the k, you will see that A controls the vertical stretch. And depending on whether it's positive or negative, if it's negative, you will have a reflection across the x-axis. And the h and the k control vertical shift, horizontal shift. And so that means we can write all quadratic functions in the standard form. Standard form means. The coefficient of x squared is sitting out here. When we complete the squares, we get x minus h squared plus k. Please make sure you remember how to complete the squares from prerequisite materials, because that is going to be crucial in identifying how the graph looks. So hk is called the vertex of the parabola, and it gives us the max or min value of the parabola, because the vertex is the lowest or highest point of the parabola depending on whether it's facing up or down. Parabola faces up if the leading coefficient, which is the x squared coefficient, is positive. Parabola opens up. If the leading coefficient is negative, then parabola opens down. So that means we can write our quadratic functions as a times x minus h squared plus k. That's the most beneficial if you want to find the vertex, you can find out where the original power function x squared shifted left, right, and what kind of stretch 
vertical stretch it encounters if you write the quadratic equation in the standard form, which is right there. Now that we know how linear and quadratic functions look like, let's see what happens to their product. So for example, we have y equals x here, and we have y equals x plus 1. y equals x plus 1 is the same graph as y equals x, but shifted 1 to the left because of x plus 1. So now what happens if I take their product? Well, we know that all you have to do is take product of the y coordinate. So when input is 0, this output is 0, this output is 1. 1 times 0 will become 0. On the other hand, when input is negative 1, this output is 0, this output is negative 1, but negative 1 times 0 will give me 0. Again, take a look. For all points below x equals negative 1, these are both negative y coordinates. Negative y coordinate times another negative y coordinate will give me a positive y coordinate when you have all x values between negative 1 and 0. Negative 1 to 0, one of them is a negative y coordinate, the other one is positive. Positive number times negative number will give me a negative number, which means that my y coordinate will be down here for the product function. When x is bigger than 0, both of them are positive. Positive times positive will give me positive. So if you were to do the product, this is how the graph would look, and we recognize it as our parabola. But you can see that we were able to graph the parabola just by looking at the two linear functions and figuring out what the rough sketch would look like. Between negative 1 and 0, your positive times negative will make it negative. And then beyond 0, when x is bigger than 0, positive positive gives you a positive value. So you can see that if you took the product of the two lines, you get this parabola function. Not only that, but you can see wherever both individual factors are 0, the product function is 0 also. And then, depending on the signs of the individual functions and the product will dictate the sign of what the product function will look like.